In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use a brute force attack to crack a WPA version two password. We're gonna do that within a few minutes. So within seven minutes, using this laptop behind me, I'm gonna show you how to crack a WPA version two password, random password, using brute force and an application called Hashcat. Now for this to work, you need access to a GPU in your laptop as an example. So in that laptop, I have a GeForce GPU that I can access to do a brute force attack very, very quickly against a WPA version two password. Please note that the password that I'm using in this example is a random password on a TP-Link router. This is actually the password that the router shipped with. One of the problems with TP-Link routers same on this router, is that the default password that the routers are configured with is an eight digit number. That allows us to much more quickly crack the password using a brute force attack with a GPU. They're not using alphanumeric characters, they're just using numeric characters. They're not using special characters as part of the default password. So if a user uses the default password, and a lot of people do when they get new routers, we can use a brute force attack with a GPU to very quickly crack the password. This is a terrible weakness on TP-Link routers. It once again took me less than seven minutes to crack this password using a laptop and a GeForce GPU in the laptop. Now I'm showing you the whole process in this video. I'm gonna show you how to capture the four-way handshake. I'm gonna show you how to convert the cap file into a format that Hashcat can understand. I'm gonna show you how to bring that into Windows and use Hashcat within Windows to launch the brute force attack against the password. So use this menu to jump to a specific topic of interest. If you're not interested in the four-way handshake capture, you're just interested in the Hashcat brute force part of the video, then again, jump to the relevant part of the video. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so once again, I'm controlling that laptop from my Mac using VNC. First thing I need to do is have a wireless network card. So in this example, I'm using an alpha network adapter. I've connected it to that laptop using its USB port. And what I've done is connected to the Kali virtual machine running on this Windows computer. So if I open up a command prompt and type IP address, what you'll notice is WLAN zero is available. So in other words, the wireless network adapter has been picked up by Kali Linux. Okay, so to simplify this process, I'm gonna use Wi-Fi, and I'm gonna use this command, sudo Wi-Fi WPA kill. I'm only gonna attack WPA networks, and I'm gonna kill any processes that interfere. Have a look at this video where I explain some of the basics of Wi-Fi. I'm not gonna to explain too much about the software in this video. You don't have to use Wi-Fi, you could use other tools, but Wi-Fi just makes it very simple. So first thing I need to do is decide which network I'm gonna attack. I'm gonna press Control C to stop Wi-Fi scanning for networks. In this example, I wanna attack this network, TP-Link. So I'm gonna press one to start the attack. Now we could run a pixie dust attack, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna press Control C and then C to continue to the next attack. I'm also not gonna run the null pin attack. Press C to continue. I'm also not gonna run a WPS pin attack. C to continue. Could also run another attack, but I'm not gonna do that. The only attack I'm wanting to run in this example is the WPA handshake attack. Now it's discovered clients. I'll try and connect to the TP-Link router, but I'm getting kicked off the network. That's what we want. It's now captured the handshake and it's trying to run the probable word list against that captured handshake. Now in my previous videos, a lot of people complained saying they're not gonna be using simple passwords on their Wi-Fi networks. But again, in this example, I'm using the default password that the router is configured as. So this specific TP-Link router has this wireless password. This router has a different password, but it's also only eight characters in length. 
So these are the random passwords that the routers are shipped with. So again, this is the password on the router, but that wasn't discovered because it's not in this word list. If I type ls, we have this hs directory. And if I go to that directory and type ls, you'll notice there's a cap file. So that's the captured handshake. I'll clear the screen and once again, there's the captured handshake. And that needs to be converted now into a format that Hashcat can use. So to do that, I'm gonna use user share hash cat utils. There are quite a few tools here, but the tool I wanna to use is this tool. And I wanna convert our handshake file to a file such as WPA2 HCC APX and press enter. Okay, so I should have remembered to put sudo in, so let's put sudo in to convert that. We can see that the handshake has been written. So Alice now shows us that we've got this new handshake in this directory. So I'll clear the screen. And once again, there is the new handshake saved in Kali. What I'll do now is open up a folder. So under HS, we've got the file. And what I'm gonna do is make VMware smaller and I'm gonna copy that file into Windows into my Hashcat directory. Okay, so to actually use Hashcat, I'm gonna open up a command prompt. I'm gonna to go to my downloads directory. I'm gonna to go to my Hashcat software. DRR shows me the files here. I'll clear the screen. The software that I wanna use is hashcat.exe and I'll use hyphen or dash capital I to see the GPUs available on this computer. So we can see that device three is unstable, but we've got CUDA information here. Backend device number one is a GeForce GTX 1650 Ti. And then we've got OpenCL information, we've got NVIDIA CUDA information here. Device two is once again the GeForce GTX GPU in the computer. Now fortunately, we don't have to specify all of those details when running Hashcat. What I'm gonna do is run Hashcat, the executable, and the type that we're going to attack is WPA. You can see all of those options on the Hashcat wiki. So we're gonna be attacking WPA version two. The attack is gonna be a brute force attack. So in the wiki, as an example, they've got a brute force attack against MD5. That's not what we're using here because we're not using minus zero, we're using minus 2500, so WPA. But it's a brute force attack and the attack that I wanna launch is against the WPA2 file that we created. And this specifies that Hashcat should use brute force using digits, eight digits in length in this example. So I'll press enter there. Hashcat is starting. We can press S to see the status. We can see that we're using a WPA attack against this file called WPA2. The estimated time to break this is nine minutes. So within 10 minutes, and it's actually gonna be quicker in this example, Hashcat will crack this WPA2 password. Press S to see the status again. We can see that we are ready at 5.9% progress. Now this is one of the problems that you can have with your GPUs is that the performance will be reduced because of the temperature being raised. But notice the attack has lasted 55 seconds. Estimated is nine minutes, 41 seconds. It's already progressed through 8.6% of this number of variations. So at this point, the fans on that laptop are spinning up, making a lot of noise. But notice we are now at 11% 
after one minute and 18 seconds. Now I won't bore you, I'm gonna speed up the video at this point because all it's gonna do now is continue going through all the different variations doing a brute force attack against that password. It's taken it about two minutes, 41 seconds to get through a quarter of all of those different options. So it's not taking a lot of time. After five minutes, it's through about 50% of all the combinations. Okay, so there you go. After six minutes and 55 seconds, it's cracked the password. It went through 69% of 100 million combinations. So the 69 millionth combination was the actual password. And if I type this again, it will tell us that it's already got the password. We should use show to display the password. So if I type show now, I can see that this is the password for this wireless network. And if I go and look on the access point, there you go. That's the password using WPA version two PSK. Encryption is AES. It took Hashcat six minutes and 55 seconds to crack that password. Now in Windows, you can open up the pot file with say notepad and you'll be able to see the actual password, which once again is the password on the wireless access point. Hashcat is fantastic software. Lots of options available. I'll show you in subsequent videos more about Hashcat. I'll teach you more about Hashcat if you're interested. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and please click on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bumble. Want to wish you all the very best. I've been